<laughs> right. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Oh, my goodness. How are you, everyone? You need to tell me how you are right now, right here in this webinar, because voila. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, it's so nice to hear from you. Are you there? Say hello if you're watching. Don't just sit there. Don't just watch this webinar. Type. <laughs> okay, I need to feel your presence, everyone. I'm alone, so <laughs> do not leave me, okay? So everyone, I need, I need you to be active in this webinar okay especially since it's a it's an interesting topic to discuss okay so we have like please say hello okay say hello everyone how are you where are you from where are you now what's happening to you what do you do like i have a lot of questions and i think you need to answer them that's for sure Okay, so my first question is, who are you? <laughs> who are you, everyone? <laughs> so tell me your names, okay? And then where are you from? And where are you now? And what do you do, okay? Hi, Aliche, hello. So we have Aliche Kieregatti. So Aliche is from Turin wonderful city, Alicia. Like, it's so amazing. You know, I think Turin is, if not my favorite, then it's one of my favorite cities here in Italy. I don't know why, but it's just beautiful for me. I love Turin. I hope to see you there soon, Alicia. I might visit Turin again after quarantine. So, hi. Please stay, Alice. I think it's just the two of us. <laughs> Alice, I think it's just the two of us. I mean, no one is here. <laughs> they don't want to have a webinar with me. <laughs> right. So I want to ask everyone who's watching this webinar, if, like, what do you do in this quarantine period? And I know that we're stuck in our houses. I know that we are, we're just here, we're not doing anything. So tell me, what do you do? Um, do you continue, you know, your language learning journey? What do you do, everyone? Tell me, okay? And of course, how are you? I wanna know how you are <laughs> because, well, let me let me start with me, okay, as an example. So what do I do? Well, usually um, I just read a lot. I study a lot nowadays because I still have, um, I still need to pass my exams this year. I'm still studying everyone, so I really need to pass my exams. And um, what else? I... I read a lot and I study a lot. Unfortunately, I cannot have some fun outside because, well, I'm locked inside my house because of the quarantine. So I don't know, like, it's not that good. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm preparing for my university exams, Anna Maria. By the way, hi, Anna Maria. Hi, I hope you, I hope you, to see you again soon. I was about to say, I hope you remember me, but <laughs> because everyone, Anna Maria is from Filtsy. I do remember. Remember that we both have the orange pants, Anna Maria. <laughs> we both have the orange, bright orange pants. Oh my God, it's so fantastic. Now I will wear it again. Yes, I remember your orange pants, Anna Maria, because I still have my my own pair. So I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to wear it after this quarantine to celebrate. 
No, I'm just kidding. Celebrating is bad. But just to, you know, um, have a little bit of color after this dark period. Right. I think we should. Okay. So what do you do, Alice and Anna Maria, in this quarantine period? I want to ask you, like, what do you do? Um, do you cook? Do you eat? <laughs> of course we eat. We need to eat, okay? We, we, we really need to eat. That's for sure. But I want to ask you first, what do you do, okay? And of course, to all our viewers, to, our, to those who are watching this webinar, we also might have some students from, from France and from Spain. So we're saying hello to you, all right? So we hope you're going, um, I hope rather, why we, I'm the only one here. So I hope you're going to enjoy this webinar. I mean, it's going to be with me, so you're going to have to stay. <laughs> you have no choice. You only have me. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, so Anna Maria says that uh, I'm working a lot and I'm becoming a wizard in this digital methodology. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what? You can also say you're becoming a tech wizard. Ah, that's amazing, right? Like a tech wizard. Yeah, so when you say you're a tech wizard, it means like you know everything about technology now. It's because of the quarantine period and or a nerd. Well, nerd in a positive way, Anna Maria. Okay, like, like a tech nerd, but in a positive way, of course. Okay. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Anna Maria. I really hope you learn a lot from me, <laughs> even though I just laugh a lot. <laughs> okay, but I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, like a tech wizard. Did you know that Like, my English school has started using... Um, Zoom, and I realized that in Zoom, you can change the background. Oh, can you believe that? You can change the background. And ever since I found out about that, I have been using <laughs> different backgrounds for my Zoom lessons. Yeah, it's so much fun, everyone. It's like, woo, like, woo. It's so much fun, everyone. I think you should try it. Um, right. And then we have Alice. Alice says that I follow my focus and other activities online. That's fantastic, Alice. I'm so happy about that. And how is it so far? How do you how do you feel about the activities? Um, and like, are, do you have some positive thoughts to say? Are there any aspects which with which we can improve um okay so let me know okay i'm really really happy that you're continuing um your english learning with my s and at home so i'm very happy about that good job alicia good on you okay great and um anna maria is asking me really which subject do you study at the university um well so just a little bit of background about me. <laughs> right. So um, I actually am studying international relations or political science. I know, I know, right? It, I, don't, I don't look like someone who will study politics. I swear to God. Right. So I'm studying international relations. Um, but I think my strongest subjects are sociology, politics, and law, especially international law. I love law so much. Um, and then, yeah, so I will be graduating this year, I hope. Please pray for me. Wish me luck. I really hope I will graduate this year. I just need to um, write my thesis, and then that's it. That's absolutely it, okay? I still have eight exams to take. No, sorry, 12 more exams to take. So please wish me luck. Um, I'm studying at Catolica. 
at um, Universita Cattolica. So um, I really hope, I really hope I pass. Fingers crossed, elbows crossed, and um, all the all the thing, all the arms crossed. I don't know. Just please help me. <laughs> Fingers crossed, everything crossed. Okay. Oh, that's nice, Anna Maria. You're an alum. You're an alumna from Catholica. Ah, oh, yay! I was. I'm a current student there. Right. Um, Alice, Matthew, where are you from? All right. So, um, Alice, I'm actually, or, uh, I'm originally from the Philippines, but I live here in Milan right now. So, Alice, I'm stuck here in Milan. I mean, I cannot do anything. <laughs> Alice, it's quite boring, you know, because like, I study a lot and stuff like that, so it's quite boring to read everything and not do ev and not do anything else other than studying. So that can be quite boring. I, I mean, I miss the Philippines because the Philippines it's so hot, and we have a lot of beaches and it's always summer there. Oh my god, that's so amazing, right? Um, and for Anna Maria, oh, I'm so happy, Anna Maria. You studied law. Wow, fantastic, Anna Maria. Oh my goodness. Wow, how did you survive? <laughs> and did you like it? Did you like studying law? All right. Um, and you were stuck in a rut. Fantastic. Yes, you're absolutely stuck in a rut. Okay, very good with the self correct. Okay, so it's with letter U, not letter O. Okay, all right, and then, all right, that's nice. I want to show you this as well um, to hold up. Oh, well, here we go. So we also have an expression which me, uh, which is to hold up. So when you say to hold up, it means to hide yourself. But it can also be used when you try to be an extrovert and try to stay away from a lot of things. So for example, um, I hold up um, in my house for three days because I didn't want to see anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when you hold up, it means you just hide in one place or you just stay in one place for a very long time. And right now I'm holding up at home. I'm holding up in my house because I cannot do anything. All right. Um, hey, we have three viewers now. I'm so happy. Hi to the other viewers. Please say hello to me. Okay. Please, I only have Anna Maria and Alice, and I, I have another one. Please, show yourself. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fantastic, everyone. Um, so I would like to introduce myself first. So good evening, everyone. My name is Matthew. I'm from the Philippines, and I live in Milan. And I'm an English teacher at um, Milano Fabio Belzi. Okay, and tonight you're going to be with me for this focus activity, okay? So this is a very interesting focus activity, everyone. So it's the arts, everyone. So in this focus activity, we are going to talk about different arts and vocabulary for describing arts, okay? So we're going to talk a lot about arts. One of my co-teachers in Fabio Filci, Robert. So Robert, um, Robert was supposed to do this focus with me, but um, he is supporting um, the initiative of his partner. So we need to send our warmest regards to Robert. Okay, and I'm sure he would he would have loved to be here with us. Okay, but like. Hi, Robert, if you're watching. Hi, Robert. I'm, I promise I'm going to give justice to this focus. Okay, great. But first, let's try to answer this question. What is art? Wow, that's so difficult. 
everyone, I want to ask you, what is art for you? So whenever you think of the word art, what comes up to your mind? Okay, so I want to know first your opinions on this before I reveal some of the definitions on the slide, okay? So what what is art for you? So in my case, um, hmm, art. I think art for me, it's the expression of self. It's the free expression of self. I mean, I know that we have a lot of, um, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted right now because there are artworks that for me should not be considered as art, but at the same time, it's art for the sake of, it's the expression of yourself, if you understand what I mean, you know? So for me, if it's the expression of self, if it's the free expression of self, it's not restricted, then I guess it's art. But of course, what do I know? I mean, my definition can still change. It's not going to be a problem, of course, all right? So we have an answer from Anna Maria. So Anna Maria says that art for her is, um, it ex it's a way to express her mood. So it's a way to express your mood. Wow, that's really nice, Anna Maria. Why and how? Why and how? All right. And then Alicia, right? Alicia, if you're still here, what is art for you? And of course, to all our students who are watching, to all our viewers who are watching this webinar, what is art for you? Whenever you think of the word art, what comes to your mind? Okay, I want to hear your answers and opinions on this, okay? So I like how you said, Anna Maria, that it's an expression of mood or um, it's a way to express your mood, definitely. Um, because I think it's, for example, if you're angry or if you're happy or if you're sad and then you try to create an art, your emotion reflects on what you do. So that's definitely helpful. That's 100% right. So now everyone, um, maybe we can take a look at some of the definitions of art for other people. So we have, the first one is this, the quality, production, expression, or, or realm, according to aesthetic principles, of what is beautiful, appealing, or of more than ordinary significance. Right, wow, wow. All right, so everyone, before I discuss this, let me just check if we are familiar with realm. So when you say realm, all right, it's world. It's another, it's another word for world or kingdom or universe, okay, realm, all right? So again, pronunciation is realm, all right? And then we have the word aesthetic. So aesthetic, if you're familiar with the word aesthetic, it means it's the beauty of something, all right? It's the, it's with the, what's beautiful and what's ugly. It's concerned with what's beautiful and what's ugly. So that's aesthetic. So when you say aesthetic principles, these are the um, the factors that might, maybe, okay, the factors that talk about what's beautiful and what's not, okay? So nice. Do you agree to this statement? Do you agree that art is this definition? I'd love to hear your opinions and, and, and insights on this, okay? Right. Good job, everyone. Very good. Let's take a look at the next one. Ooh, it's quite long. All right. So the second meaning of art is actually the art of objects subject to, subject to aesthetic criteria, works of art collectively as paintings, sculptures, or drawings, 
a museum of art and art collection. C, fine art, commercial art. Ray, okay. So this one is a little bit complicated with its definition, all right? So it says here that the class of objects that are subject of aesthetic criteria. So meaning that every object is based on the aesthetic principle. So every object is based on what is beautiful and what is not. So that's art. And the result of this is a work of art. So when you say work of art, work of art it means it's extremely beautiful. Work of art means extremely beautiful. Okay, right. Do you agree to this, everyone? Tell me. All right, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions about this. Right, now, we also have this one, art, which is a more general, a more general concept of art. So art is a field, genre, or a category of art. Dance is an art, for example. I definitely agree to this, everyone. This is absolutely correct. Because for me, I think art, it's, it's a genre. Okay, It's a category. You cannot limit art with what you know, but you need to expand it. You need to broaden it. And that's when you know that it's art because art is something that is quite different depending on the person. So I definitely agree with this statement. Right. And then let's take a look at the fourth one. So number four is the fine arts collectively, often excluding architecture, meaning art and architecture. Hmm. In this case, I'm not 100% sure. I don't 100% agree to this because I think architecture can also be considered as an art because it's the art of process. It's the art of creating designs and manifesting those designs. So I think architecture is just art. I really like that. That's lovely. Um, do you agree to this, everyone? Let me know. Okay, great. Oh, I'm going to change my brand name because I'm not sure if you can see it. Here we go. Right, I think it's better now. Like, like my name. So now it's in dark background. So you can see my name pop up there. Like, All right. Um, and then next we have number five. Art is... Any, fil any field using the skills or techniques of art, such as advertising art or industrial art. Nice. Okay, so this is a much more specific term for art, which is absolutely correct as well. It's not a problem. Okay. And then the last one, we have the sixth definition of art, all right, which says, that it's a branch of learning or university studies, especially one of the one of the fine arts or the humanities, as music, philosophy, or literature. Absolutely, everyone. So art can also be considered as a subject at the university, or it can also be a degree. There is a degree in fine arts. There's a degree in literature and arts. There's a degree in music and arts. So art can be um, expanded into different horizons or into different degrees, all right? So this is definitely a more technical term for art, which I, I don't disagree, I like it. And I really like undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate degrees on art. I think they're fantastic, everyone. They're very useful as well. Um, contrary to what other people believe, I think art is very useful, especially the degrees that you hold in art, right? So everyone, do you agree? Do you agree with these statements? Tell me in the comment section, okay? If you agree with these, if you agree with these statements or not, okay? I'd love to hear your opinions about them, okay? So in this case, we talked about art 
and if you have any questions, please let me know so that I can help you. Okay, great. Now, everyone, let's take a look at this one. Okay, here we go. Great. So I want us to read this together, everyone. Okay, so places of art. There are many alternatives to the expensive famous art museums. Here are some examples. Artisan shops, open air museums, arts and crafts fairs, galleries, auction houses, sculpture parks, and pop-up museums, okay? Right, everyone, can I ask you first if do you know the definitions or the meanings of these words, okay? All right, so these are the alternatives to the art museum. So now we have a lot of places for art, okay? So before I, before I talk about them one by one, I want you to give your own definition on these expressions or on these mm, terminologies, okay? So first, let's talk about artisan shops. So what do you mean by artisan shops, everyone? What do you mean by it? So when you say artisan shops, what comes up to your mind? I want to know. Okay, to our new viewers, please say hello in the comment section. I would definitely love to hear your, um, sorry, I would definitely love to hear from you and read your comments because, well, I'm alone, if you can see. I, mean, I cannot hear you nor see you, so please, this is the only way that I can feel you. <laughs> okay, so please do something about it. Right. Okay. So everyone, let's first talk about artisan shops, okay? All right. Okay. So when you say, mm -hmm. so when you say, here we go. So when you say artisan shops, we have an answer from Anna Maria. It says artisan shops, Artisan shop sells good realized by handcraft. Okay, fantastic, Anna Maria, very good. But um, instead of realized, you can say made by, um, instead of realized, you can just use made or done, okay? Realized is a bit Italian. So you can say that artisan shop sells goods that are handmade if you want, if you want to make it simpler, okay? Good job on this, Anna Maria, very good. So that's absolutely correct, everyone. Artisan shops are made by, like with 100% effort, with 100% genuine materials, okay? So that's why some of them can be quite expensive, okay? Because they, they've taken a lot of time and effort to do that, okay, great, nice, okay. Now let's have a look at open air museums. So open air museums, Anna Maria said that open air museums could be a flash mob, right, why not, very good. Or open air museums can also be something with um, installation art. Okay, or so with, with art installation, when we say art installations, these are the interactive artworks, okay? Artworks that you can touch, feel, see in the open air, okay? I actually love this. Um, there, um, so everyone, you know that I'm in Milan now, and I forgot the name of the museum. Pirelli, Hangar Bicocca. Pirelli, am I right? Hangar Bicocca, right. So there is a museum close to my house. It's called Hangar Bicocca Pirelli. If I'm not mistaken, that's the name. Um, and once it hosted an art installation from a German art, um, art creator. 
And basically what he did was he created a very dark tunnel, a very, like a huge tunnel, like it's so dark inside the tunnel. And it was around, it was very long. It was really, really long. It. So what we did was we went inside that tunnel and I, I couldn't see anything. It was pitch black, everyone, pitch black. It was just like a void. Okay, like I couldn't see anything. So in order for me to reach the other side, I needed to, I needed to touch the walls just to guide me towards the exit. It was absolutely fantastic, everyone. So I need to touch everything in order for me to get out of that art installation. It was amazing, everyone. I forgot the name, unfortunately, but I'll definitely look up for him again so that maybe I can share his works to you, all right? Right, um, and then we have arts and crafts fairs. So I guess this is quite easy for you, everyone. So when you say arts and crafts fairs, these are the, um, like the stands, okay? So the Bancarelli, we call them the stands. So we have um, the stands where you can buy um, small items or artisan items as well, sold by those who created them. So these are the arts and um, crafts fairs, okay? So fair meaning, um, it's the, um, it's a place where a lot of sellers get involved, okay, to sell their, their things, okay? And then we also have galleries. That's nice. Ga have you visited any galleries, everyone? So I want to know. So galleries are absolutely stunning, especially with uh, photos. Um, I haven't visited a lot of galleries in my life, but I definitely would love to in the future, mainly because I know this is an excuse, but it's just that I don't have a lot of time to visit everything because I try to manage my time equally with my studies at work. So definitely in the future, I'd love to visit more galleries. And how about you, everyone? So um, have you visited any galleries in the past? If yes, what were, what were your experiences? Okay, so share, share us. So tell me your experiences and I'd love to read them. Okay, right. Now let's have a look at the auction houses. Ooh, this is interesting. I think this is fairly new, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is fairly new. So when you say auction houses, it's um, it's a company that runs the auction. So what do we mean by auction? Are you familiar with auction? What do you mean by auction? Hmm? So auction is, a, it's quite popular, okay? So when you say auction, it's a public sale of goods, okay? So it's a public event where you sell your goods to the highest bidder or to the person who offered the highest price for your item. So for example, let's do an auction for my cell phone. So this cell phone starting from 10 euros, and then for example, someone says like, 15 euro or 10 euros, like, okay, 10 euros. Like other person says 15 euros, okay, 15 euros. I'm going to give it to the other person, okay? Right. Um, all right, so Anna Maria says that um, auction houses is an economical proposal, meaning it's, a su it's supply and demand. You know what can be? Definitely, it's a bid, absolutely, Anna Maria, it's a bidding. That's for sure, that's sure. Good job, very good at that. Um, I do a bid, or bid is also a verb, so you can just say to bid. 
Okay, so I bid for the for the item, for example. All right. Okay, and then we also have um. Oh, so Anna Maria told me to visit Galleria d'Italia in Milan. That's nice. Okay, I'll take a look at that. I promise. I'll double check that. I'd love to visit that. One day, I promise. Right. And then how about sculpture parks, everyone? So sculpture parks are not that popular here in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. And But we definitely can see it in other countries. Uh, for example, this picture, I'm not even sure if this is real. I hope it is. Unfortunately, I didn't do my research. I didn't do my research. So um, I have no idea if this is real or not, the one in the picture. But this is an example of a sculpture park. Okay, so a sculpture park is where you um, display or show your sculptures, right? But usually it's in an open area, so meaning the garden, for example, or a really huge empty lot, okay? And of course, last one, we have pop-up museums. So are you familiar with pop-up museums, everyone? I think this is kind of new too. Mm -hmm. So when you say pop-up museums, okay, it can be an art installation or it can also be a, a temporary exhibit, okay? All right, so... um. Usually, a pop-up museum lasts for only a few hours on one day, okay? So that's a pop-up museum. Okay, Maybe it's somewhat, yeah, um, pop-up museum is somewhat related to art installations as well. But I guess it's much more specific. So it doesn't last for a long time. It's just there for a couple of days or maybe a couple of hours. It really depends. So also, maybe it's not publicized. So you only hear about that event the day before or two days before. So that's a pop-up museum. Like it's all of a sudden. Like flash mob. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like flash mob per performances, Anna Maria. That's true. Great. Okay. Right, everyone. Thank you so much for... Um, doing these uh, doing these places of art with me. I really appreciate that for um, identifying them. Thank you so much. Now let's have a look at some art vocabulary that we can use, okay, when we describe an artwork or any artworks. Right. So everyone, I want to hear first your opinions on this. So if you want to share your definitions, please do so in the comment section, okay? So first we have art vocabulary, so exquisite, first rate, blemish, detrimental, inadequate, abstract, a collector's item, masterpiece, retrospective, sketch, installation, priceless, curator, worthless. Okay, so now everyone, let's try to talk about each of these words, okay? So the first one is exquisite. So when we say exquisite, what do we mean by exquisite? Hmm? So when we say exquisite, it's, it's like a, a special kind of beauty, shall we say. It's, it's really lovely, okay, shall we say. So that's exquisite. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can also say, um, maybe you can say refined, or you can say, um, hmm, charming maybe, delicate maybe, and something that is outstanding also. Here we go. So exquisite, you can call it like something is refined, something is charming, something is delicate or outstanding, all right? How about 
first rate, everyone. What do we mean by first rate? Hmm. So when we say first rate, I think you um I think you already know something about um uh first rate, so you can also say work of art. Work of art or commendable as well. You can also say commendable. That's really nice. Okay. Great. And then how about blemish? So what do we mean by blemish, everyone? Great. Do you have any idea? What do we mean by blemish? Hmm? Great. So when we say blemish, it's, well, it depends on your opinion if it's quite bad or not. But definitely when you say blemish, it's um, a blot. You can also say a blot, okay, or a small flaw or a small mark. Let me type that. So blemish is small mark or a blot, as we call it. It's like a drop of something that, like, it it can destroy something. The blemish can destroy something if something is really flawless. But then, I doubt that it can be flaw. If I doubt that it can be a flaw because something that is something that has flaws can also be considered beautiful okay great and so that's for blemish and then we also have detrimental okay nice so what do we mean by detrimental everyone what do we mean by detrimental that's nice i actually like this word because i use it often in um in writing and in other conversations, as we as we call it. So when we say detrimental, it means here we go. So detrimental, it means damaging or harmful. Okay. So when something is detrimental, it means something is damaging. Something is harmful to someone, okay? So that's it. All right. Now everyone, I wanna hear inadequate. So what do we mean by inadequate? I'm sure this is quite easy because you've already, maybe you've already encountered this. I mean, you're already in this level. So I'm assuming that you've encountered this in the past. Okay. Right. So when you say inadequate, maybe you can also say inadequate. You can also say poor or inept. So maybe this is more on the quality of something or the texture of something. Like it's not really good. It's poor. Okay, so that's inadequate. And let's take a look at abstract. Hmm, this is quite nice. So what do we mean by abstract, everyone? So abstract is something that that's not concrete, something that... It's not physical, rather. It's not realistic. So maybe you can say theoretical or conceptual for this. So abstract is conceptual or theoretical, shall we say? Okay, so this is abstract. 
And then we also have a collector's item. So what do you mean by a, a collector's item, everyone? I think this is quite easy, I think. All right. So when you say a collector's item, it's a very precious item. Like no one in, in this world has another copy or has another model like that. Okay, so that's a collector's item, okay? How about masterpiece? What do we mean by masterpiece? Hmm. So masterpiece, when you say masterpiece, it's your best work so far, shall we say. We can also call it that way. So masterpiece is your best work so far, okay? Right. And then we also have retrospective. So what do we mean by retrospective? Retrospective, it's kind of like a blast from the past. It, it makes you think, it makes you wonder, it makes you reflect on about something on the past. It makes you remember the past. It reminds you of the past. That's retrospective. Sketch, it's a drawing, possibly using a pencil. Installation, I already we've already discussed this in the previous slides. It means um, when it comes to art, art installations are something that you can touch, you can interact with. Priceless. So when you say something is priceless, it means you cannot put any amount on that. So that's priceless. Okay, great. And then you can also say that it's um, hmm, it's invaluable, like priceless. It's also invaluable. And then we have curator, right? Curator is a very good word, everyone. So curator is someone who keeps or who tends to the collection in the museum. You can also call him or her a keeper, a caretaker, so that's curator. And of course, and of course, worthless is the opposite of priceless. So worthless meaning it doesn't have any worth. It's not worthy at all. So that's worthless, okay? Great. Um, and then that's it, everyone. Great. So unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time now to continue this webinar, but I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a lot from me, especially using the art vocabulary. Okay, so I have given you all the definitions for the words here, and I hope you will use them in the future. Okay, so everyone, if you have any questions, please let me know and I will do my best to help you. Okay, but unfortunately, everyone, I need to say goodbye for now. Thank you so much for joining this webinar with, um, with me, especially Anna Maria, who's been very active. Thank you so much for staying, Anna Maria. I really appreciate that. And to all our students who are watching, thank you so much for joining this webinar. I hope to hear from you again next time. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.